Hello, how are you? Welcome to CUO, where we promote empowering information about Africa and Africans and correct misrepresentations of issues that affect Africa. Making the rounds in the last three years have been news um, of sexual exploitation and abuse of blacks and Africans under international humanitarian action and presence. It happened in Haiti. It has happened in many countries across Africa where you have international humanitarian presence. It's making the rounds right now. Um, just recently being released is some um, um, sexual exploitation and abuse from um, international humanitarian aid actors who are, who are supporting the Democratic Republic of Congo around um, Ebola response. You've had such similar situation in Haiti. You've had it in other countries, mainly in Africa. You've had it in many countries in Africa. And I don't want to be, spe go, be, be specific about the organizations or the countries, but predominantly these sexual exploitation and abuse cases unraveling and unfolding across Africa. Because I don't want to be specific, because it's not about one agency or the other. It's about a sector wide challenge and issue is very often when these stories emerge you know international humanitarian aid workers are blamed this assume that oh here you are you're an international humanitarian worker part of a charity organization you go to africa and you exploit africans you exploit black people you sexually rape abuse young girls as a peacekeeper it's happening it's talked about a lot yes it is sad that an international humanitarian worker, aid worker, who goes to a country to assist people affected by disaster or conflict, exploits them, rapes the children, and then sexually exploits the people. That is sad. But even sadder, more tragic, is that we have to put the blame where it belongs, and that is Africa. Um, this is happening in, you know, sexual exploitation and abuse of vulnerable population across Africa through international humanitarian action and presence is happening, is prevalent, is increasing because Africa's leadership, Africa's government and leadership do not scrutinize, do not manage, are very open and welcoming of international humanitarian action as the main way international actors operate in Africa. So let me repeat. Yes, we've heard stories, increasing stories of sexual exploitation and abuse across African countries through international humanitarian agencies, NGOs, charities who come to Africa to provide assistance. And through that work, stories emerge of exploit, sexual exploitation and abuse, rape of girls and children, rape of children, women, abuse, sexual exploitation and abuse in all forms. And that happens, yes, sadly, because there are those international humanitarian aid workers who abuse, who abuse the what could be perceived as altruistic in terms of wanting to help vulnerable people, who abuse that front, that facade, to exploit sexually abused children across Africa and is prevalent across Africa because of how open Africans are so open have just submit themselves to humanitarian charity and aid as the way they engage with the global community. Now, over 70% of the countries in the world that appeal for international humanitarian assistance every year are from Africa. Many of these countries in Africa do not have a sudden onset disaster they just use the humanitarian approach to address lack of provision of basic services. It's become the de facto way many African countries address the lack of security, lack of provision of basic services to their people. That, that reliant, that embracing of a process and a system that is intended for sudden onset disasters as the mainstay in many countries in Africa is to blame too for why many children, women, kids, the young people, why Africa suffers 
through international humanitarian action, suffers sexual exploitation and abuse of its children, its women, its vulnerable population. Because Africa submits itself, opens itself up, lays itself bare to international humanitarian action as the de facto way of addressing critical issues that are development related, challenges around provision of basic services, it's become an option African leadership have stopped questioning. Every year, many African countries appeal for international humanitarian aid every year just to just roll into it. They just do it unquestioningly. They don't question it. They don't even challenge it. It's just something they roll themselves into by de facto. You know, they don't actively reject it. They don't accept it. They just let international actors pull them into international humanitarian appeal every year. They don't scrutinize, they just assume, okay, you do this for us. No, that's what's creating the damage. So yes, it is sad that international humanitarian actors with NGOs, different multilateral organizations who have signed on to provide assistance to vulnerable people, it's sad that that agenda is being co-opted, abused by some to sexually abuse children, women, men too. It's sad that that is happening, but Africans must. It's happening mainly in African countries. And African leadership, the leadership in that continent, African countries that have opened themselves up for regular de facto international humanitarian action year in a year out, not questioning the agenda, need to take responsibility for it. Those African countries are putting their children the women out there to be sexually exploited. It's not just international actors, it is. We must put the blame where it belongs, more where it belongs. And that's Africans, African leadership that allows these forces in and not scrutinize it, not challenge it, just allow it in. So yes, to stop the sexual abuse and exploitation of Africans under the guise of international humanitarian action, international humanitarian aid, Africans, Africa's leadership and Africans as peoples need to step up. We need to question what we are so embracing of, why we've chosen to open ourselves up to charity as a way to address critical economic and development issues. It's the price we're paying. Thank you.